Good morning. Good morning. Welcome once again to the house of the Lord. This morning as we study God's word, we're going to be focusing on that word which explains God's law of the Sabbath. But more than just looking at God's prescriptive laws of the Sabbath, we're going to look at God's mercy which prescribes this law. And that mercy by which we observe this law and how God uses us to apply that mercy to one another. For our worship this morning, we'll be following the service the, or the service of word and sacrament on page 26. And we join in singing our first hymn, 528, Christ is our chorus.
we pray. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, Uphold us by your power, and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. of the Son to live with you forever, and with your power continue to set us apart, so that we may live not for this world or for ourselves, but for you and you alone. Strengthen us through your holy word, and let our prayers and our praises be acceptable in your sight. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Father, one God, now and forever.
morning is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5 to 12. And in this, God, through the Apostle Paul, speaks of, of the glory and the power of that which is within us. We are by ourselves weak in so many ways, in every way. But what we have within us, that promise of God, and that faith in that promise which God created in us, is power, it's glory, it's eternal life for us and for all who will hear it and believe in it. So Paul speaks, 2 Corinthians 4. What we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. This is God's word. We continue on page 30 with the verse of the day, taken today from Psalm 119, verse 105. Hallelujah. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Hallelujah. Consecrated bread, which was not lawful for them to do, but only for the priests. Or haven't you read in the law that the priests on the Sabbath day in the temple desecrate the Sabbath and yet are innocent? I tell you that something greater than the temple is here. If you had known what these words mean, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. We continue with our next hymn, 529, Built on the Rock, verses 1 through 3.
Good morning, everybody. How are you guys? So I'll turn and sit this way. Are you going to sit over here? You can sit wherever you want, Madison. Okay. How are you today? Good. All right, today we're going to talk about things that help other people and things that hurt other people. Sounds like a pretty easy difference, right? Sometimes, though, it's kind of hard to know. I'll give you an example. Would you say that it would help somebody to tell a funny joke? Think that makes somebody feel good? I don't know. What if it's a really good joke? <coughs> makes you laugh. Makes you feel good. It might be a good thing, right? Funny jokes are, are good. What if it's a funny joke about somebody else? That would be bad. See, that would hurt somebody, and that's not good, right? Okay, what about this? What about if you play with a friend? That'd be good, right? Thumbs up. What if you play with a friend but tell somebody else that you can't play because the two of you are playing? That, that might hurt somebody, right? That, so that would, might be bad. What if, what if you cleaned your room all by yourself and told your mom? She would be so happy, right? That'd be good. But if you clean your room all by yourself so you could go tell your mom, my brother or sister didn't help me, oh, see, now what did you do? That's bad. Now you're trying to make them look bad. Sometimes we can do something that, that sounds good, but it can actually hurt somebody else. And we don't ever want to hurt anybody, do we? No. Jesus never wanted to hurt anybody either. In fact, that's why he did all the things that he did. Think about it. You know, there, were, there was something that God said once, a long time ago. He said, here are my rules for you, and they're good rules. I want you to keep them. But if you don't...